Problem Solving Represent Data, Lesson 10.7. Now, you need to watch all the Chapter 10 videos before you watch this one. And you can go to the links in this one's description because this is a wrap up of everything we've learned and you could become confused. The information in a graph can help us solve problems. It's easy to count and compare amounts. We need to remember, to solve word problems, there are important questions we need to answer. We need to ask ourselves, what do we need to find? What information do we need to use? Which strategy we will use? And did we answer what it was asking us? So here we've got some fish in a pond. We've had them before. And there are many fish in the pond. There are blue fish and yellow fish. How many fish are in the pond? So what do we need to find? Well, we need to find the number of fish in the pond, don't we? And what information do we need to use? We need to use the number of blue fish and yellow fish. And which strategy will we use? Well, for this video, we're going to make a bar graph. And yes, we could just count them, but this is a lesson about representing data and bar graphs. So we have a bar graph of fish in the pond. The title of the bar graph is fish in the pond. We can see the labels for the fish, blue and yellow. And we can see that there's a bar for the blue fish and a bar for the yellow fish. The blue fish total five and the yellow fish total four on our scale. That's our scale of the number of fish. Now, if you were to look at this very quickly, the picture compared to the bar graph, which one do you think would be the fastest way to find how many fish there are in the pond or how many blue fish or yellow fish? It's going to be easier to look at the graph because we don't need to count. It did the counting for us. It's telling us there's five blue and four yellow. We can add the five plus four and we know there's nine fish. So it's easier to use data in a bar graph than a picture because the scale gives us the amounts. We don't have to count. We can make a graph to solve. Here we have a turtle, a fish, and a frog. And there are turtles, fish, and frogs in a pond. It tells us there are four more turtles than fish. It also tells us there are three fish and there are two fewer frogs than fish. And it wants to know how many turtles are there. So there's some information in here that we don't even need. We'll need it to fill out our bar graph, but we don't need it to know how many turtles there are. Can you see the information that is not needed? It's telling us there's four more turtles than fish, and there's three fish. But then it starts talking about frogs. So we really don't need the information about the frogs, do we? We can put it into our bar graph, but we don't need it to find how many turtles there are. So let's start filling in our bar graph. We know there are three fish, so let's fill in the fish up to three, okay? One, two, three. So that's going to be our fish, all right? The bar that represents how many fish there are, okay? Now it says there are four more turtles than fish. That means there's going to be four more than this three. So our turtle bar is going to have to have four more squares filled in than the fish one. So that would be one, two, three, four. Well, that puts us at seven. So we need to fill in seven for the turtle one. That's four more than the fish, isn't it? Get this all colored in. You'll do a better job when you use crayons. Markers don't do that good of a job. Now it says there are two fewer frogs than fish. Well, there's three fish 
And if there's two fewer, that means there's two less. So we're not going to fill in this square or this square. We're only going to fill in this one because that would be two fewer. Now we know the number of animals in the pond. How many turtles are there? We can follow the bar and then follow the line down and see there's seven. There's seven turtles. And how many animals are there in all? Well, we have seven turtles. We have three fish and one frog. We can add the seven plus three. That's seven, eight, nine, ten, and one more is eleven. There's eleven animals. Making the bar graph made it easy for us to do four more and two fewer. Let's do another one. This one says make a graph to solve. There are ten penguins. Four penguins are wearing coats. Look at that. See a little penguin wearing a coat? The rest have no coat. How many penguins have no coat? So what are we looking for? We're looking for how many penguins have no coat. And what information are we going to use? Well, we're going to use that there are 10 penguins in all and four are wearing coats. And what strategy will we use? We're going to make a bar graph because that's what the video is about. And we can start filling in the bar graph. It says four penguins are wearing coats. So here's the coat label. Let's fill in four for they have coats, okay? So our bar is going to go up to the four, isn't it? Because four are wearing coats. The rest have no coat. Well, it tells us there's 10 penguins. So if there's 10, how many are wearing no coat? Well, it would be the difference between the four and the 10, wouldn't it? We could actually do 10 minus 4 to get the answer, okay? We can also count the squares to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 have no coat. So we can fill in the bar for no coat with 6. So it's going to go up to here, isn't it? It's going to stop there for 6. We can make our bar. So how many are wearing no coat? Six. And the bar graph helped us to see how many more we needed to make 10. Four with a coat plus six with no coat would be 10 penguins. Okay, let's try one last one. Emma asked 25 people about their favorite color. Then she started to make a bar graph of the information. She didn't finish the bar graph. So she started to make it, but she didn't put the answer for how many people chose purple. So we can figure this out because we know she asked 25 people. So how many people chose red? We we'll look at red and we follow the bar up and we can see it stops at seven. So we know seven people chose red. How many chose blue? We look at the bar for blue and see it goes all the way to the top to 10. 10 people chose blue. How many chose green? We follow the green bar all the way up. It stops at the five, so we know five chose green. If she asked 25 people, how many must have chosen purple? What we can do is total these, find out how many there are, 
and see how many we need to get to 25. We add the 7 plus 10 plus 5. There were 7 red, 10 blue, and 5 green. We find out how many they are. We get the sum. 10 plus 7 ones is 17. 17 plus 5 more, we can count on. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So for these three colors, there's 22 answers. But she asked 25 people. So we could take this 22 and figure out what we need to add, whoops, what we need to add to it to make 25 people that she asked. How many more do we need to make a 25? We can start at the 22 and count up to the 25 and see how many fingers we use. 22, 23, 24, 25. Three. We needed three more to get to 25. That means three people must have chosen purple, and that was the missing number from her bar graph. See? If there was a three there, then that would have counted for all the people she asked. We also could take the 25 people she asked and say if we take away a number of purple ones that it would equal the 22 that we did know about. See? And how many would we take away from 25 to get to 22? And we could count back 24, 23, 22 and see that it's 3. So it's 3 purple. So how many people chose purple? 3. And here's the 3 on the bar chart if we drew a line here and filled all this in, we'd be able to finish the bar graph for Emma, wouldn't we? Okay. Now we're done with Chapter 10 and picture graphs and bar graphs and tally charts. And we're going to be working on Chapter 11. And our next video is about three-dimensional shapes. That's 3D shapes. Okay. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.